be here at the disco. Let me tell you what happened to me the other day. guys, Dave Darren here, a little different show today. By the way, I'm wearing a cap today. It's got a U on it, and I figured I'd wear this because U stands for underdog, and I'm talking about dogs today. Underdog, underdog, speed of lightning, ball of thunder, fighting all who, what was it, Roman, Roman wonder, underdog. So here we go. I guess that this, and you know, I got like no fucking people watching. Brian Anderson's on here. It's interesting, Brian, if you're watching, it says concurrent viewer zero. You know, YouTube and Facebook are all really pricks. You know, you really don't trust them. So, but I'm going to show you something. Yesterday I went and my wife and I went out, went to a either Marshalls or Target or something like that. We didn't wear a mask, by the way. And if you're wearing masks, you know what? Why don't put a muzzle on you so we can shut your asses up too with all the worrying about what's going on and the over broadcasting of the coronavirus. But to, be, to get back to my untopical lack of politics today, I brought this ball, okay? So here you see, it's a rubber ball, and inside of the rubber ball, there's another rubber ball, a red one. And inside of the red ball, there's a couple things here that make it make sound, right? So it's the typical ball that you would throw, your dog retrieves it. So I'm just going to give you a little information, because you guys know, at least if I'm a douchebag, you know at least I like animals, right? So here's a little bit of things. You know, we protect children. And we protect adults, we protect everyone, but do we protect our pets? So when a company makes a product like this, 
you got to shout them out as being people that are maybe making your dog get in danger, especially the smaller dog. With, the, with What I'm going to show you here is particularly dangerous for a smaller dog. Now I'm going to get with it. I'm going to get at it. Here we go. So typical rubber ball on either end of it, there's a hole. So it's kind of a cool thing you, inside of it. I said that there's a red ball and the red ball is solid. There's no holes on the red ball. So even if you throw out the ball, it's going to float because the red ball in the middle, even though water is going to go inside of here because of the holes in it, it's still going to float because the red ball in the middle is going to be airtight, right? All right, so here's what's wrong with this thing. And I got to tell you guys, if you have dogs and if you have toys for your dogs, you got to check them. And here is exactly why. Now, I checked this before I played with Willie, and I found a significant couple flaws, two flaws in this toy. All right, now, the typical way that a dog plays with this, you throw it. The dog grabs it, retrieves it, and brings it back to you. Now, how does he do that? Of course, he's going to grab it with his teeth. And when he's grabbing it with his teeth, he's going to compress the thing, right? And if he compresses enough, you'll hear the sound. So the sound is supposed to seduce the dog to come and play with the toy more, right? So, okay, so how does the thing in the middle make that squeak? How does it do that? It's probably right now. Willie wants to play with the ball because he's infatuated with this ball. Here he is, Willie. So he wants to play with the ball. Will you jump on my lap? Come on, Willie. Come on. Come on. He's not used to jumping on my lap here. Come on, bud. Uh, let's, let's show everybody you. All right, here we go. This is Willie. And look at him. He wants to get the ball. We're not playing ball yet. We're going to play in the pool in a little while. After I make the toy safe again, because this toy is not safe right now. I should have realized if I squeak it, he's going to play, right? So here we go. Let's take a look at this toy. The outside is relatively safe. I can't critique the outside. It's got a decent supply of rubber on it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna break. It's not gonna splinter all pieces of rubber or hard plastic get in the dog's mouth. So the outside is cool, all right? I'm gonna get to the inside. The inside is a nightmare. And look at him, he's gonna bark at me. <laughs> You're gonna have to leave the room, but I'm trying to talk to, to people about dog safety. Notice that this, here we go. If I put it at the right angle, you see this little thing in the middle? Almost looks like a button on a shirt, right? This thing is what makes it make noise. And there's two of them. There's actually one on one side and one on the other side, all right? I, if you flip it around, I can't do it without taking my finger off because I wouldn't be able to show it to you by pressing against the outside plastic. But here we go. So you take this toy, which you think is, it's supposed to be safe enough for you to play with your dog, right? Take a look at this. See this little thing here, this, this little noise maker, right? Like I said, the natural function of this toy is for the dog to grab it and squish it with his teeth. So when he's playing with it, he's going to carry it to you. How's he going to do that? He's going to have to put it in his mouth with his teeth. The teeth, especially with Willie, with these big uh, Belgian Shepherd teeth, he's going to compress it, right? And squash. It'll make noise. It'll attract them more. This thing here, this little thing here, is the danger device of this piece of this toy which is a crap design of this, how they get away with this and don't have lawsuits, I have no idea. But look at this. If you press it hard enough, which means that the dog compresses it with his teeth hard enough, watch. It's, it's a little bit hard to do it, but not hard to do it because Willie would be able to do this. I had it, I, had, I was, okay, here we go. I, I got it. And I pulled it out. You see this? Look, when the dog does it hard enough, it'll, it'll pop out. You see it? It's popped out. There's a little groove on it here, which matches the groove in the ball, but it's, it's a piece of rubber. So it's going to flex. It's going to, and it's going to, it's going to protract this to this degree. And when the dog plays with it more, you know what's going to happen? See this here? Watch. Pulls right out. When the dog's got this in his mouth, and pulls this out, where's it gonna go? It's gonna go down his throat, right? Now, Willie's here is a big dog. He's 65 pounds, he's a shepherd. Is it gonna clog up his esophagus? Is he gonna be smart enough that when he's got his mouth, he's gonna, he's gonna choke it out? Or is he gonna swallow it and then it's gonna get stuck in his stomach somehow? But look at this. Isn't this significantly dangerous for a manufacturer of a dog's toy to make a ball like this, it's not just got one of these. I took this one out, right? Right out of here, right? You can see how it goes back in here. If I wonder, if I wanted to fix it, I could put it in here and press it. And you notice on this, like I showed you, on this side here, you probably can't see it because of the camera. Or I guess you can see it. So there's a groove in here, and the groove in here binds it to the ball here. 
And now on the other side, not only is there one dangerous device in here, there's a second one, right? So look, I can press this and watch. It'll pop out to a degree. It'll pop, depending on the angle you got it at, it'll pop out significantly. There, and it just popped, did you see? It just popped right out of there. So there's, a, there's two of them that could have landed in my dog Willie's throat. Now, if you've got a smaller dog than our 60 pound, 65 pound Willie, and you got, say, a 20 pound dog that's just going to play with this toy, and he's going to rough it up to some degree. He won't be able to grab it as thoroughly as Willie can, but these things get stuck in that 20 pound dog's throat. Look at this. You got a small esophagus, a small throat with these rather big things that get stuck in his throat. Can you believe this? Can you believe the lack? How much, how much intelligence does it take to figure this shit out, right? How much brain power does it take to realize that this dog toy is dangerous because of this stuff? Now, if you had a kid, a child, you can be sure that this would be pulled from the shelves because there would be a lawsuit and a company would lose a ton of money because they killed somebody, somebody's kid because of this. Be pulled off the shelf, there'd be lawsuits, there'd be class action lawsuits. But what do we do about our dogs? Do we at least inspect the toys before we let the dog play with it? See, now I figured this out. I saw it. Now it won't squeak anymore, but fuck it. At least it's safe. It probably won't float as well now, so it'll be less of a toy to play in the pool. Maybe I can get the inside ball out of here and put another one in. <laughs> what do you want? You want to play, right? You want this toy now that it's safe, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, you know, to I'm gonna contact this toy company, and I'm going to say, what kind of lunatics do you guys have? What kind of... It, what kind of child, child minds do you have to have this ball utilize? I guess I can get it out of here. Look, I'm, I'm going to be able to squeeze it out of here, and I'll put another one in here that's solid so that it can float because Willie likes playing with this toy in the pool. And now with the two holes in the inside ball, it's going to absorb water and it's going to sink. So this toy is no longer as playful in the water, but I'm going to adapt it and fix it so I can. I know you want this. <laughs> So here goes a toy that's useless and could have been dangerous and could have killed Willie or someone else's dog if you weren't careful about toys like this. So if you get a toy from a store, but it is like a public service announcement. You get a toy for your kid, you're going to inspect it, right? You're going to hope that at least the place that's stocking the toy is going to be aware of any lawsuits and pull it from the shelves immediately. But what do they do with dogs? This is still on the shelf. I'm going to go back to where I bought it. I'm going to bring this. I'm going to tell them about it. And hopefully they'll pull it from the shelf because someone's dog is going to die with this. Let's see if it'll run. Willie, you ready? Go get that toy. Of course he's going to go get it. That's all I got. Anyone send anything here? I'm, I'm curious because I got like no fucking viewers. It's funny. I've got Rita. I've got uh, uh, Kathleen. And I've got, who did I have earlier? I had Brian. So there's an Adam. So I got four people here. None of them are appearing in the con concurrent viewers on YouTube right now. And I think I know why is because YouTube now fucking hates me because of all the commentary I've made against their, against their philosophy, against their principles, against their liberal format. I don't comply with that. So they don't want me to have any publicity whatsoever, any popularity. So they don't even show me now the amount of concurrent views I'm getting while I'm watching my own video airing. It says zero. And yet there's four of you guys here watching my show right now. Why doesn't it at least say four? It's saying zero. And that's because they want me to get discouraged. And you know what? I don't get discouraged because I don't intend to make this show anything more popular than it is, which is obviously not popular at all because my viewpoints are very unpopular. So rather than bust my ass or stress myself out, I do shows during my lunch break right now. I'm on lunch break. I'm still working today, by the way, because I care about my employees, despite the fact that no one else cares about my employees because they all feel like COVID-19 should shut the whole fucking country down. And I'm getting back into it again, so I better stop, all right? But take, take my advice. If you've got a dog and you've got dog toys, you got before you throw it on the floor or throw it so he chases it and retrieves it and bring it back, which remember when I showed you the ball that Willie's playing with and he's disappeared with right now, but he's disappeared in safety because I took out this fucking lunatic device, which one of them doesn't even work. The other one does work. Sounds like hollow. Sounds like New Year's, right? Wonderful, come in here, Willie. He did it. He's got the ball in his mouth. Doesn't squeak anymore. 
What happened? Come back here. Willie, 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 Willie. See, he plays, he keeps away the ball from dad. He likes to play. This is the way he likes to play. It's like a, it's like a seduction to Dave to pick up the, it's a, he seduces me to play with him. But then as soon as I get close to the ball, he runs away with the ball. So he, he's, uh, I have to have two of them to play with him in the pool. So that when I throw one and he gets the one, I can get the other one. So it's like, it's like me playing ball. It's not Willie playing ball. It's me playing ball. And I got to have my wife at one end of the pool. I'm at the other end of the pool. So I throw the ball to her, and Willie chases the ball with my wife, and then my wife throws it back to me. My wife's throwing arm is a lot better than it used to be since we got Willie. Yeah, and Rita's saying Happy New Year. But, you know, the bottom line is if you've got dogs, a lot of people do have dogs. A lot of people obviously care about the dogs that they've got. And if you had a child, you would probably make sure that you inspected the toy, although maybe a lot of you don't because you just think that any toy that you find in a Toys R Us or wherever you buy your toys that they're pretty safe because they've been scrutinized already. And we have now, we have all the medicines uh, that, that have the, the cap that you can't get off the fucking things. You know what? I wish people would be more responsible and, and so that I don't have to teach my wife how to unlock something. When, when she, it used to be, she used to have complexities with that. We would get something, we'd get like a jar of peanut butter or something like that. Not that I'm using peanut butter in any sexual way with my wife, but get a jar of peanut butter. She can't open the fucking thing. You got to press it down and twist it. Or you got, you got other thing. What do you got? You have the Listerine, right? The mouthwash. And you got to compress both sides of that thin, long cap. You got to compress both sides and then turn it, which is a pain in the ass. It's like a complex. You got to go to college to learn how to open up a fucking bottle these days. So I wish people would have the enough common sense. What happened to common sense? Where you take all the kids, all the stuff that you don't want your kid to swallow, and you put it on a high shelf so they can't reach it, guys. Instead, you got to complicate my life by making this. We have a pool. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to, hang on, hang on. Let me show you something about the pool. Now, here goes a chlorine, the uh, pool's right outside the, I could get it quickly. Here goes a chlorine tablet, right? What are these, two and three, I think they make them in two or three inch sizes, all right? Chlorine tablet. Notice that it comes in this container you can't fucking open. It's a pain in the ass. It's, it's not only a thick plastic to open it, it's a complication. You gotta pull one ring from one side, one ring from the other side. It's hard to grip the ring. It's hard to get it started because it's like a can of beer or a can of soda. Where sometimes if you've cut your fingernails, if you're a guitar player, I'm going to take this out of here because it smells bad. But basically, look at it. It's got plastic on it, right? So I'm going to talk about the plastic. You got the, you got the chlorine tablet inside a plastic. And the, and the chlorine tablet and the plastic is inside a plastic container. Hang on a second. Let me get this out of here. I, I could bring in the small plastic container. So look at it. Here's, a, here's the uh, chlorine tablet. And if you notice here, and this is an old one, so it's not filled right now. That's why it's easy for me to hold up, even though I got these huge muscular arms. Usually it would have a little circle here, right here where you put your finger in, and then you can peel it off, right? And on the other side, there's also another one. It's not here now because it's been open. It's used. You put your finger in here and you peel it off. To take your finger into this little circle here and take it off, it's like it's they don't they don't leave it here unconnected. It's connected here, so you got to break that seal and pull it. It's like trying to open up. It's like trying to open up your beer can if you got short fingernails. If you're a guitar player and you cut your fingernails like I do, you don't have a nail to get in there and open it. So you have to use a spoon or something like that so you can get in there and open it, right? So you can break that tab and open it up so they can drink the soda and the beer. So they complicate that as well. So this is this is a mess because it's a thick piece of plastic here that's hard. Even when you get your finger in here and click it and crack it so it opens, then to pull it here is still a nightmare. And then on top of that, then when you, it used to be the chlorine tablets were not encased in plastic, each single one of them. So now you gotta open up the plastic. And the plastic, by the way, constricts the smell of the chlorine and that small plastic, so it's like a claustrophobic chlorine tablet so as soon as you open it up you get you know I don't smoke weed or anything like that but I get the smell of chlorine that's not only in here when you open it up of course you got the chlorine tablets but it's also then a, a small container holding the condensed chlorine smell so you get doused with chlorine when you open a fucking thing 
Hang on, I'm back in a second. All of these, I'm going to get one more thing. For all you guys that think I'm bullshitting about how we, we worry so much about kids, but so little about dogs, right? Here goes the Listerine, all right? So I use Listerine because I want to smell good when I kiss my wife. Now, when I'm doing oral sex, I don't really care how I smell because my mouth's down there with the smell of fish, right? So, but here goes the Listerine because I want to smell good. So then when I kiss my wife, she's not kissing a, a polluted, disgusting mouth, which everyone thinks I got a polluted, disgusting mouth because of the show I do, right? But how do you open this thing? Look, look, my wife's, my wife's from Japan. They don't have these overwhelming safety precautions because they still have brains, right? They still have fucking brains. United States, we don't have brains. So we have to protect idiots from idiots, right? So here's this container. My wife doesn't know how to open it, right? So I tell her then, okay, there's a complexity because we're protecting kids. We're going to drink this fucking bottle like it's a blueberry juice, right? So here you got to take, you got to, you got to get, then you got to figure out where you put your fingers. We know where to put our fingers to stimulate our wives or stimulate ourselves if we're a guy. We know how to use our fingers or our hands so you can whack off, right? But how do you open this fucking thing? Where do you put, do you put your fingers here? Do you put your fingers here? Do you put your fingers, where do you put your fingers? So I got to tell my wife, where you put your fingers, not on me, when you're trying to open up this bottle, think of this as a shaft, all right? And you put your fingers here. You, gotta, you can't go here. You can't go here. And you can't go, of course, on the opposite side across. So you got to put your fingers in between these two little tabs here, here and here. You squeeze it. And then while you're squeezing it, you turn it. And then, then do you keep on holding it? So you, how are you going to turn it? If you're going to keep on holding it, you got to lift the thing up and spin it this way. How do you do it? So you, and then it comes off freely. All the fucking complicated nightmares to protect us as adults from being, having common sense in our heads to know to keep this fucking bottle high up so the kid doesn't get it. Instead, we got to complicate adults' lives who have no fucking brains anyway. So how can you call them adults? Got to complicate their lives so you know that you got to go through all this effort to open up this fucking bottle. Should I, let me see if I can find something else. Hang on. Let me see if I can find another product. A pain in the ass. Here we go. Here's another one. Eye drops. All right. Now, I don't smoke weed, so I don't need eye drops, but I have an allergy. So here's an eye drop container. All right. Who makes this? Let's see, who makes this? i got to put on my glasses to see who makes it. By the way, you should put things on these glasses to protect idiots. It says, make sure you open this up fully so you don't poke yourself in your eyes. So if you open it only up a little bit, and then you go like this, you're going to poke yourself in your eyes. So we got to teach idiots that they got to open up the glasses fully before they stick it on their stupid heads, right? So this is made by a company called uh, R-O-H-T-O, Roto, Roto Ice, all right? So how do you open this thing up? How do you open this up? So of course, every single container has got to be different. So not only do you have to go to Drexel University, where I went to for college, to learn how to open up the Listerine bottle, you got to go to Temple University to figure out how to open up the eyedrop bottle, right? So how do you open up this one? So you get someone here who doesn't know how to open it, doesn't feel like reading the small print. Look at that small print. To read, How do you fucking read this? How do you read this if your eyes are all red and bloodshot? Your eyes are red and bloodshot, so you want to use this. Your eyes are red and bloodshot, you can't focus, and you're going to have to, how are you going to open the container? You've got to read this. Isn't the purpose of the stuff that's in this make your eyes better so you can fucking read? Right? So how do you open this? So if you spin it, you're going to spin it for days. Then maybe some people are going to get frustrated. They're going to try to pull it, and it won't pull off. The way you open this is you've got to press this down. And then you twist it, and you can hear the little click, and then it opens up. Then to shut it and lock it, press, you hear a click. Although, so you're, what are you, how, do you, how are you going to know how to open this fucking thing up? The first time I got it, I thought, how do you how do you open it? And then you're looking for, what, is it a pull? You don't pull it because it's, you can't pull it, you can't turn it, and then with the, you can't go side to side like with the Listerine. You can't go like this and twist it. You got to press it and then twist it, and then it opens. Another fucking obstacle. I gave you three now, right? 
Let me see if I can just in my regular medicine cabin. Let me see if I can find some more bullshit. All right. In the meantime, you guys are going to see my little asses is walking past, right? Well, I came back empty-handed, but uh, here, here's a roll of toilet paper. How do you get the roll? How do you get the first sheet off of the toilet paper? How do you get that off? How do you get the first sheet off? You try to rip it, and then because it's so fucking fragile for your dainty asses, uh, I'd rather use fucking wax paper on my ass because my ass is tough. So we got all these wimps now worried about coronavirus, and they, so they have that delicate, delicate. Let's call it properly, delicate toilet paper. We're gonna have delicate toilet paper, so. It's so thin to protect our little dainty asses that you can't get it off. The first sheet you can't get off. Now, this one's been used already. I mean, it hasn't been used. It's not brown, but I mean, it's been opened already, right? And like I said, I have an allergy, so I've been, periodically, I'll use toilet paper. I use two sheets, by the way. So I'm very economical with toilet paper now. As a guy selling toilet paper on eBay, is a joke. He was selling one, he was selling individual sheets of toilet paper to be funny about it. So how do you get the first sheet off? You rip it. And then it, it kind of, it rips. You don't know if you're going to get, this is a two ply. So you don't know if you're going to get one ply or the two plies. And when you get only one ply off and you're ripping it, then you got the confusion that you got one ply off, you're going to get into two plies. So it's a nightmare. And it, the whole fucking thing is a nightmare. And, and I, I, how many more things can I find that, that bug the fuck out of me? Because I know you people think I'm insane here with shit that bugs me. This bugs me. Now, let me see if I can find, I have an idea in my head. Let me see if I can find one. All right, here we go. I got one here. Now, this is this is via respect of my wife, Mrs. Darren, all right? She buys these containers that hold the tissue paper, right? So you got the, the, you got the thing of tissue paper here. Now, there's some of them where you don't put the actual container in here of tissue. I know you guys are now saying, oh, my God, Dave's got toilet paper. He's got Kleenex tissue. He's living a real, he, this guy's a millionaire. He's the number, he's the one percenters of the United States because he got, not only he's got toilet paper, my God, he's got Kleenex tissue, and it's a brand, Kleenex. Some of these, what you do is you put, some of them you put the square one. You ever see those, instead of being the flat one, instead of being the rectangular ones like this, they're more square, and they're higher. You know what I'm talking about, right? So my wife gets these, and usually the square ones are a pain in the ass. Because this one here, when you put, when you notice here, you got, this is the top. So the top's pretty thick. And it's, the tissue box is pretty flat. So when you put it on, you got enough room here. Meaning when you put it down, you got room here to put your hand in and pull a tissue so it doesn't get stuck. You get the square ones, you know what I'm talking about. And my wife puts them in there, the square ones, and you can't pull the fucking first piece out. You're ripping it as you're pulling. You're not getting a whole piece out. And I need a whole piece because look at this fucking nose. I can't have the little tiny piece. I got to have a whole fucking tissue for this big Italian schnozzle I got here, like Jimmy Durante, who no one knows who that is, right? No one knows who that is because we're all people that have disenfranchised people from the past, so fuck them, they're dead already. Screw them, but I need the whole piece of tissue paper for this big nose. And when I've got the square box that my wife puts and you put the cover on it, it's like having this. It's like, Basically, it's like having this. Here I said you got a buffer. You got, it's like taking this and pushing it flat here absorbing the buffer because there is no buffer and then you try to grab the tissue out and it's stuck and you gotta you gotta pull out like six of them to get to then the one the one the one you gotta pull out like six or seven of them that are all then all torn up all fucking nightmarish and you can't use them because they're then you gotta waste six sheets out of the box of, of uh, kleenex tissue another nightmare that i go through in the dave darren household another now let me walk around and see if i can find another product that i fucking hate Hang on, stay with me, don't leave.
I'll tell you what, I'll do a commercial so that when I go in the kitchen this time, at least you guys can be entertained instead of seeing my ass cheeks and my white shorts. Here's the glass break. Here, here's something. Here we go. Here's one if you missed it. About three weeks ago, I'm driving my Jeep, and my Jeep had a little crack in the back window. I don't know how it happened. I don't neglect the car. It recently occurred, right? So by the way, if you have glass breakage insurance on your car policy, it doesn't only, I thought it was only windshield breakage. It covers every piece of glass, side windows, back window, and windshield. Protects all that. I have no idea if it protects your uh, rear view mirror or your outside mirrors that see you when you're going back. I don't know if it protects them or not. But it does protect the windshield, side windows, however many you have. If you have a four seal, you probably got four windows. And the back window. So I had a crack in the back window. Called up my insurance company thinking that they would say, no, nah, unfortunately it only protects the windshield. It covers all the glass. So I had a guy here to come and fix the glass window. First guy that came, you know what he did? He put in, I have a Jeep Wrangler. So I've got the tailgate, you know, it opens out with the big wheel in the back. And you'll see it in the video I'm going to show you. Open it up. And then you got to open up the glass. And it's got the hinges on the top. I've got a 92 Jeep, so it's older. And then what happened is he put a new piece of glass in there. And before he adjusted it, he actually closed it. And because he didn't adjust the hinges up at the top, it stressed the glass so it broke and I had him come in here to fix the glass that had a crack in it so that it wouldn't shatter. He removed that without it shattering, put a new piece of glass in it without the, the crack in it, of course, because it's brand new. He put it down instead of adjusting the hinges and lowering it down slowly and saying, okay, if I closed it all the way, it's going to stress out the top hinges. And unfortunately, the top hinges, I can't believe it, the top hinges actually grip the glass. You would think that they would design it so that the glass sits in a metal frame so that the hinges are on the metal frame and not the glass. So that at least it's not going to bend and stress the glass out because you can't stress out tempered glass. It's not the front windshield glass. It's the back glass. And when you shatter that, it's tempered glass. It, it All over the street, there's glass. Check this out while I go and find another piece of product that I fucking hate. Here goes, uh, this is uh, from three weeks ago. I put it to music, all right? Why I would do something like that, I put it to music. The guy was, you can see the guy was pissed. And I have one of these uh, cameras outside so I can be, so I can micromanage and control people walking across my street so I don't get robbed. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like Al Pacino in, uh, what was the movie? Scarface, where he's got all those video surveillances. I've got video surveillance all over the place. So my camera actually caught the moment when the glass shattered, which was interesting. So here we go, guys. Two music. Here we go. I fucking hate. Now, by the way, I love this uh, Tropicana watermelon. This is really good stuff. There's another company that makes watermelon and cucumber. I think they sell that at Trader Joe's. That's some really good shit. It's hard to find that. It doesn't come out every day of the year. So here's watermelon Tropicana. So here you got the cap, all right? And I don't think they have, I forget if they have plastic around the cap here. I don't remember if they put plastic around here or not. They probably do since everyone's so fucking anal retentive. I mean, what, kids going to get hurt by drinking watermelon? Well, you can drink as much fucking watermelon as you want. The kid's not going to suffer from drinking this, but yet they still got to protect it. They got to protect it in case someone accidentally 
accidentally poisons it, right? So not so you got to take the cap off. Now this has already been drank to a degree, right? So it doesn't have what I'm going to show you on it. But you undo the cap, and then typically it's got this piece here, where you got the plastic cover, and then you got to lift up one side and pull it. And often when you lift up the one side and pull it, because it's adhered to this fucking thing so tightly, you can't get it off. And then you got to get a you got to get your kitchen knife, or you got to get a a, a, a pair of scissors and poke a hole in it. Like Pocahontas, like no one likes Trump when he calls Pocahontas, Pocahontas. You gotta puck a, puck, you gotta, you gotta pump a fucking hole in it so you get your finger in there and then rip it out. I hate this type of container. It's over protection. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die of this or coronavirus, right? Another one. So you got, okay, so I like drinking this tomato juice, this V8. I should have all these sponsors should sponsor my show, right? So here you got this pro Now, over the decades, while we still live with these cubicles in our offices, we still live with this mechanism, right? This mechanism being the top here. How do you get, like I said, I'm a guitar player, so my nails are short. They're usually shorter than this, but I've been playing the guitar less because I've been so occupied, right? So how do you get your finger in here if you got no fingernail? Now, I happen to have a fingernail, so I get my finger in here, and I can play it like a jaw harp, which no one knows what a jaw harp is. Remember jaw harps? Of course no, right? So I can get my finger in here now because I've got a nail. But when I don't have a nail, I can't get my finger in here. And if I try to get my finger in here with my really short nail, it hurts. It's painful. You ever, you ever have that pain of your fingernails are too short and you cut them too short and your fingernail hurts? can't even masturbate with a finger that feels like that. You can't whack off. It hurts. It hurts to touch anything. Even as small as I am, it hurts. So you get your finger in here and then it's hard to open. It's hard to open. You can't get your finger in here to then do this. So you gotta get you got to get a spoon or a knife, or I have a guitar pick here, and you get this in here, and then you can open it like this, because you can put something in here, you got leverage with the guitar pick, you got leverage, you can put it in here, and then you can open it enough to pop it the rest of the way, I'm not gonna do it right now, because there's a keyboard under here. Another pain in the ass product, although V8 is good juice. I thought I had a third, oh yeah, here we go. Here goes Bulk Foods. <coughs> Shit that I shouldn't be eating, but once in a while, I'll eat these sesame sticks, corn chips. By the way, I have to wash the toasted corn. And but and so now, how do you open this fucker, right? Usually, there's a piece of uh, tape, like plastic tape on here. And it's hard to get that because it's amazing. As much as I hate plastic, when you have, or you get plastic on here, as much as I say plastic is my worst enemy because everything I have that breaks is made of plastic. You have that plastic like tape on here goes all the way around and then how do you you can't you can't open it so you got to get a pair of scissors to cut it so then you can open it and peel it so then you have this and then here like how do you open this fucking thing like there's a lip on it here but the lip is not the lip to lift it up you got to get to the it oh i'm not even showing you guys i'm showing you like dead wood here so you got this after you take the tape off of here and you got this little lip here so you think okay you lift the lip up you have to lift is the container, the bottom part of the container. It ain't opening. So my wife brings this to me. She said, how do we open this thing? She brought it to me and said, how do I open it? So you got inside between here and here. You got to get your fingernail again. So if you don't have a fingernail, you're fucked. And you got to figure out where the separation is. And you got to find it. And then you get a paper cut on your finger. Finally, I found it, right? And you can see that. So then you can open it. Another pain in the ass mechanism. That I worry about. I got too much free time. Everyone's probably going to say, Dave, you got too much free time to worry about this shit. Oh, what else What else I got here? Let me see if I can find some other shit. I got one for you.
All right, guys, I'm back. Now, this one, I've made phone calls. Not on this particular one. I think I did haagen -Dazs. I called them on the phone. I think you got, I played that on the air. You heard my calling up haagen and complaining. All right, now, here's another one called Cold Brew Latte. All right, now, I don't actually like this. My wife bought it. I don't really like it. But inside this container, does it tell you how many are in here? So I'm going to tell you how many are in here. I'm going to tell you my complaint about this. By the way, it's made by Trader Joe's. Well, okay, serving uh, nutritional facts. By the way, there's no fucking nutrition here, first of all. But it's five servings per container. Five. Now, in a square box, aren't we usually used to dealing with even numbers in a square box, right? A, a box contains two, four, six, eight. It's a square. You buy a six-pack of beer. You're not buying a five-pack of beer. You're getting six. Two, four, six, right? You buy, you buy eggs, a dozen eggs, you get 12 eggs. And what do they have? A baker's dozen, which is 13. What is that? I forget that. But you typically buy 12 eggs, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You, in a square, you fit an even number. So here's five. Now, I don't understand this. Look at the box. It's square, right? So, by the way, here is the, the square, the unit that comes out of it, all right? I don't think of this sexually, but it's a, it's a unit that looks like a unit, all right? So you can see this, right? on the box. You can see that you could fit one, two, three. One, two, three. Why are there five in a box? Why are there five in a box? There's room for what? There's room for one more. Why don't they put the one more in the box? I don't understand that. It feels like we're getting ripped off. It feels like there should have been six in a box. When I called up haagen -Dazs, and I was talking to the guy, if you remember that conversation, I asked him, I said, I've got my box here, and that was five in a box also instead of six. And I said, right now, I can't hear you. You're mumbling. Are you, are you eating the six one out of my box? I asked the guy. I said, I said Did you, were you the guy that opened up my box and took the one out, and you're eating the box, one of mine that came in my box, and you're eating it while you're talking to me? What the fuck's going on? I don't understand that at all. So when you get this box, now I happen to open this to make sure it was like I thought it was. So I did not eat one of them to make it a funny dialogue to talk to you guys. Because you see here it says, you see that? It says, fuck, can you see that? Yeah, you can see it now, right? Five in this can, five servings per container. So you see it doesn't say six. So when I'm pulling one out and I'm showing you what it looks like, I'm showing you one, two, three, four, five, six, but there's only five in the box and there's a space for one more. Where the fuck's the one more? I feel like, this is what I feel like happens. Some... Some guy comes in after work, right, and the box has already been opened, right, and then there's, there's, there's five in here, and he's going to think, okay, my kid ate one, so he's not going to complain, he's going to go through the, the rest of the five in here, and maybe his kid opened it, and he just didn't want to eat it, and he closed it back up, it didn't, it's, it's already open, the father comes home, he sees it, he's five in here, so he eats one, there's four in there, and then after the four are eating, he's going to go buy another box, and every time he does, he's going to get five in a box instead of six. He's getting ripped off by one. One-sixth of the package is a rip-off. Fucking hate that. Why, why would they do that? Why would they make a box that can hold six? Which they lose money on because they made the box too fucking big. Although I guess they didn't because they conformed to an easy size to make instead of trying to do the little cutoff here. But why wouldn't they put six in the fucking box? Seems like to me they're putting five in the box and they rip you off so you don't realize, oh my God, one's missing every single time. So by the time you buy four of these, you lost one per box. So you've lost four, eight, you've lost four or in one, in one, uh, forget, I'm not going to do the math for you. You get one, you get my drift, right? Can I find something else? Oh, here we go. Oh, these squirt jars are a pain in the ass. Uh, these, and I'm not going to squirt it because I might squirt my face because right now this is one that's been open. So my wife is using it. But these things with these squirting mechanisms in it, you can oh, you can see here. This, now I remember this one. This confused my wife because you had to spin this thing here a certain way. Otherwise, you could not press it to squirt. So not only, I think it had a little, it had a cap here. Then once you took the cap off here to expose the element that squirts out the stuff. What is this? Stainless steel cleaner. All right, so this is what I guess we use this for our refrigerator. It's made of stainless steel, right? So as soon as she got this, she took this off because she's used to that, although she wasn't used to that in the beginning. She took this off, and then, then you got the complication here. What, what the fuck is this? 
What do you do with this? You can see it twists and turns here, right? What direction do you put this to make it function? Another nightmare. We got to read the directions of how to use the product, and then you got to have it read the direction on how to get the product to launch out of the fucking bottle. So you got multiple things here, so that you so that the kid doesn't get squirted in the face by this stainless steel cleaner, right? So you got to make sure that the kids are doubly protected with this and this and the complications of that. Fuck! It's just a, why don't we just take adult control of our situation? And then we don't have to complicate people's lives who don't have any fucking kids. I told you guys I don't have any kids. I had two. I sold one on eBay and I sold one on Craigslist. And I used it to buy a car. I wonder if I can find something else. Hang on. Hang on, guys. I'm on a roll. Ugh. Here we go, guys. I'm back. If anyone left, screw it. I don't really care. Here's another here's cereal. General cereal. You can see I eat pretty healthy. I got fruit and yogurt cereal made by Special K. I got the family size, which I don't really need because I just told you guys I had two kids. I sold one on eBay. I went on Craigslist. You get more for your kids on Craigslist than you do eBay, by the way, because you have to pay eBay too much money to sell your kid. So here you got the family size. So then, then you got the complication. <coughs> of how to open up the fucking thing without ripping it so you can at least reseal it. So usually you have, you can see here, usually they put glue here, right? Put glue here and they put glue here and they have the glue here and the glue here. So when you're opening it up, you're gonna damage this, this cardboard here because it's flimsy, it's gonna rip and then you can't reseal the fucking thing which is a pain in the ass. So how do you keep it fresh if you can't reseal it? Then you get in here to the actual bag of cereal then how do you open this without having to go all over the place? Because you got the seal here, right? You got this here. And if you rip this the wrong way, it rips down here and then cereal's all over the fucking place. And if you try to open it by doing this, you're going to have cereal <coughs> all over the place. So then how do you open it? You got to get a pair of scissors and you got to cut it here. So you have sort of like a spout so you can spout it out. And then how the fuck do you reseal it to keep it fresh? Because now it's, it's all like this, so it's fat at the bottom. You stick it in the box. You can't get it in the box because it's too fucking fat. And then when you get it in the box, which now you've broken the box more, and then you got it in here like this, and you're not keeping it fresh. So how do you do this? So I, I don't know. What I do is I flatten it out. Play drums on it. So now, it's not, now you can eat it for a guy that's old and has weak teeth, right? Which is not true. So then I flatten it out like this, so at least then when I put it in the box, it'll fit in the box because now it's flat, plus I put it upright so it doesn't leak out. <coughs> then I can put it in here and it can kind of stay fresh, right? What, what? How many people have trouble with, with this type of box? I hate this fucking box. That's all I got. I'm going to hang up now. I'm done. I'm done with my rants. But remember, the first we started off today with the dog stuff. So if you got a dog's toy, which Willie's in here still messing with, I gotta play ball with him now. So if you if you get a dog's toy, be careful with it. All right, be, look, it, inspect it, look at it like it's like you're giving it to your kid, right? With all the safety stuff you do in the medicine cabinet for the kid, try to protect your dog. Look at the toy before you give it to him. 
figure out what you first thing you always got to figure out is making squeaks right figure out where the squeaker is see if the squeaker is going to pop out of the toy into the dog's mouth that's the first thing i look at anything that squeaks i look at all right if it squeaks look at it see where it's squeaking from see if it's going to be something that's going to fall out of the thing that's holding the squeaker in there if it's going to be in your dog's mouth swallow it and cause an issue and then you got to take the dog to the hospital to go through and do a surgery to take it out of his of his intestines or his stomach or wherever it's at because it's going to die from the poisoning of the plastic in his stomach as it deteriorates and puts a puts a toxin in your dog right can't believe people make that i can't believe people are so stupid that make these products that can't i saw that as soon as i got it home within two seconds i thought why what the fuck i gotta take this shit out of here and I, I took it out i made the product safe how could i have a product for literally literally i got it home and I took it out of the box. I looked at it. And literally, I would say literally in 15 seconds, I looked at it and said, this is dangerous. And I made it safe. Within 15 seconds, the people that created it couldn't figure that out. When they, when they have it, how many people were in the process of designing it and marketing it and have it in their hand and don't realize, well, this is dangerous. What the fuck are we sending this out for? It's dangerous. I can't believe that. I can't believe the stupidity of people. Although I do believe the stupid people because I hear the stupid people complaining to me all the time. That's all I got for today. And what's what's uh, Rita says? That's a fancy box. You talking about my box or the box of us? Uh, I've got a fancy box, don't I? You're talking about the special K. Let's see what else. Men should have a big nose. It's sexy. That's what Rita says. If we have a big nose, by the way, but this is the way it works. Remember those toys that you had? What were they called? I think nerd toys, N-E-R-D, and you squeeze them, and you squeeze them, and the head gets bigger up at the top. That's the way it is with a guy's penis. If he's got a big nose, it's like he was squeezed. How does he get the big nose? You squeeze him down below, you push the penis, and the nose pops out. If it's a short nose, someone has, God has, I'm not a religious guy, but God took man, and the way he decided to build man is he's got a big penis or he's got a big nose. And the way he adjusts the male body is it's in, it's in the development of each human. Okay, we're, we're going to give Dave a big nose. So how do we give him a big nose? We push the penis in, the nose gets bigger. And then he leads me that way. So uh, you either get a male that's got a big nose, a male that's got a big penis, or he's average in both ways. Now, do you want an average nose and an average size penis, women? Do you want that? Do you want an average nose? And an average size penis, do you want a big nose and a small penis? Or do you want a big penis and a small nose? What do you want? you got to make your choices now. you got to make your choices. Vote for the penis of size that you want in your next election. <laughs> what else do we got here? Let's see. Run, Dave, run. That's what Kathleen says. I love sushi. By the way, I like sushi as well. Although, you know, I'm a vegetarian. Supposedly, if you're a true vegetarian, you don't eat fish. You don't eat anything with eyes. So, in other words, if you're a true vegetarian... You cannot give your wife oral sex because you're eating something with eyes, right? So there's a problem. There's a, there's a kind, I got to ask the people in the vegetarian community how they say that they're vegetarians and they don't eat anything with eyes, yet they're with their wife in bed or their girlfriend in bed and they're down there between the legs and they're eating something with eyes. How do they get away with that? I got to ask the vegetarian community how they get away with saying they can't eat anything with eyes when they're down there performing oral sex on their wife. Answer me that. Peanut butter can be tricky. Supposedly, a lot of people die eating peanut butter because it gets stuck in their esophagus. There's another thing that, uh, who was saying that? Rita says she loves sushi. Another thing that Japanese people eat is, what's it called? Uh, oh, I can't think of the name now. It begins with an M. Mochi. Mochi. And it's like a, it's like a, I think it's made of rice, but it's like purified rice or, or uh, rice that's been made into a, uh, almost like a thick cream and they make a mochi out of it and you put it you put it in your mouth and it it'll definitely clog up your throat it's a it's a dangerous thing to eat so guys i think that's all i got except for the closing song thanks for putting up with me today and thanks for enjoying my wacky shit that i usually do once in a while at least that wasn't too political today right so i didn't annoy people who don't like my politics cheers guys
to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.